Now, buddy, I do love getting exotic add-ons for the flight simulators. Here we've got a new release, a plane called the Aviation Elise, which I think might be the first fully electric passenger airplane, which is able to carry nine passengers. Yes, it's just been released by the developer of Live to Air, who have previously done interesting aircraft like the Kawasaki Ninja for the Microsoft uh, or the Chevrolet Corvette C8, which is, I mean, why not? But this seems very much interesting indeed. I mean, we can open a whole can of worms about electric aircraft, which do exist and do fly. For example, the PP Strel Velis, the electro airplane, a very small one. It had its first flight in 2020. And well, it only weighs 428 kilograms and you can only load 178 kilograms in this plane. So too heavy person, not possible. This thing will not be um, successful in America anyway. But now the Aviation Elise is only a prototype. It's not the concept, it's done its first flight. Yeah, this is the second prototype that the company made. I think the first one burnt down in a lithium iron um, fire. This is great. But yes, it did fly in 2022. Although some people might consider this flight not very successful. See, you may have already guessed the big problem of having electric aircraft is the range. We just don't yet have batteries that can store energy in the density that kerosene jet fuel can. So this thing only had a proposed range of 440 nautical miles, which doesn't sound too bad. I mean, that's enough to go from San Diego to San Francisco. That's fine especially since the smaller aircraft cares about shorter routes. The problem was that during this test flight, they noticed that the range would never be this far. Yes, they toned their expectations down to only 250 nautical miles of range, which puts this airplane into a very niche market position right now, I think. But nothing to worry about. They're right now working on a third prototype, which might be able to fix some of these issues. Anyway, we now can actually fly the second prototype that we've been talking about in the three versions that aviation claims it's going to make. Whether it's the commuter version, let's take a look at that. We've got some liveries here. That's kind of nice. Arrows, Air New Zealand. All right, and so here it is. It doesn't look too bad. I kind of like it. A lot of people say that it's kind of ugly, but I don't think so. It is unique looking. It is kind of thin. Anyway, take a look at the cockpit right here. Once again, live to air actually made this, you know, pretty nice. Let's take a look. This is the commuter aircraft. So we've got nine seats, which isn't a whole lot. Let's open the door, which nicely works as well. All right. All right. You know, for the initial design, I don't think the idea of targeting, you know, these short haul flights is bad at all because these are the flights that are most polluting. Am I right? Yes, indeed. Short haul flights. That's really where I think it makes most sense to, you know, test electric aircraft. Aircraft. By the way, we've got and we've got a literal closet. What can we do with all this? Lol, that is so fucking necessary. I can't believe it left to air. That's amazing. What a neat little add-on. I've why is this done? Great. Okay. It's interesting. Why would people get undressed here in this commuter aircraft? All right, doesn't matter. Let's take a look now. Um, how do we start this up? Can't be hard. Battery. There you go. Avionics masturbation. That's what it stands for. Mm-hmm. Aviation Elise. There you go. It's aligning its H H A H R S. Now, how do we turn this plane on? Is this just the uh, engine one power switch? Is that all that is? there to it okay it should be able to just go yeah right there that one so quick it's just these two switches and of course like in an electric car there's not really an engine start or engine stop it's an engine spin and engine don't spin scientists anyway so you have these thrust modes here taxi so that's great um all is well actually um let's go ahead and come on while the hrs is aligning right here let's re check out the ipad that we have do we have tinder on it no come on yes all right we've got navigraph we've got all we need you can actually fly this plane pretty properly so all is well it's time to there you go these engines are immediately on that's kind of nice all right let's go and taxi here now especially in the case of electric aircraft i think it is wrong to be you know conservative i mean i'm not the biggest fan of electric cars. I don't have one. I have kind of the opposite. The sound of emotion. But as much as I love the smell of Avgas in the morning, I would probably not mind an electric plane at all if it were to work. I mean, it's insanely quiet. That means you can operate at night and not disturb everyone. We should be able to have an amazing acceleration. Obviously, the torques are much higher. Let's go to power mode. Let's see how powerful this plane really is. Uh, all right, full power. Yes. Okay, come on. You need quite a lot of power. Um... I'm gonna tell you about why later. Come on, 28 knots, 30 knots, 
35, uh, 37, 39. Okay, we are not the fastest airplane. We're going to need quite a bit of runway, but that is fine. Yes, I mean, it's easy to be very scared about the lithium-ion batteries. You really wouldn't want to fire um, in those. Although I'm not in a position to evaluate the dangers of having a big battery down there. I mean, the only thing I probably can explode and catch fire in a combustion airplane is the engines, but they are outside of the plane. And what can catch fire here in this plane is obviously the batteries, which are inside of the fuselage. Um, all right. Anyways, we can put the landing gear actually up. Okay, that's cool. Yes, take a look. And this plane really is flying as it should be. What I'm kind of disappointed by is the performance. This thing is not as agile and fast as I'd hoped it to be. Or as it probably needs to be, honestly, because I watched this documentary right here about what could potentially be this plane's biggest customer, and that is DHL. Well, what plane is DHL planning on replacing with this electric aircraft? It is the Cessna Caravan that's been flying in the Caribbean or in the USA at extreme airports. This did not look very extreme airport worthy. I mean, look, are we able to fly to St. Bartholomew with this thing? Probably not. Let's take a look. Really, it's interesting to hear the sound of the engines pretty good as you can see we've got like these pusher propellers here very interesting design too let's maybe check out what's behind us yes some boxes of cargo not too bad i don't know i think i broke the screen sir but that's fine we won't need any now by the way of course this cabin here is pressurized std oh no shoot now of course a big concern with these electric aircraft is okay we've landed at this airport we are a dhl plane a small commuter plane that also wants to go off very quickly i mean we've flown in the caribbean to this airport and saw how flight operations worked at these small commuter planes they were fast not even needing to refuel oh all right hard landing i want to stop you are a relatively fast airplane uh thanks thanks for the brakes we're able to do this quite well and so i was very much pleased to hear Battery this charging times have gotten shorter it now mm -hmm. takes just 30 minutes to provide enough power to reach the next destination on the plane's multi-stop daily schedule Okay, very interesting, whatever that means. I don't think that's full range overall. The whole news article right here is super optimistic. But yes, charging times are relatively low. Problem is that remote locations like this where DHL does fly to, I think if you were to just put this thing into the power, it would probably suck the whole island dry of energy which is great fun. So again, this is what the cargo variant looks like. So we take a look at the luxury version right here. Oh yes, a black one. I think just the AC alone will drain the battery quickly. Good, all right. Maybe it looks ugly. Maybe it does look like a fish. So this is the luxury version right here, which got a bit of, all right, this is fine, I guess for, you know, the occasional CEO that needs to travel quick. This works as it even has a lavatory with trash. That's where my videos belong. Uh, anyway, we might just actually do a performance test here on the takeoff. Once again, I did expect this plane to be insane, insanely agile, but that would just overheat the batteries. <sighs> right. Now, I think it's wrong to name this plane bad. You know, the whole model, the whole concept. Because, well, this is only the second prototype. Of course, things are going to go wrong. Of course, things are going to disappoint. I can't wait for... Oh, wait, we just taken off, by the way. I can't wait until we get better battery technology. Although, that's actually... Uh... I mean, and I'm obviously not the only one. Obviously, aviation isn't the only industry to do that either. I guess we'll have to wait until the third prototype to actually judge whether this whole thing sucks or not. Until then, the second prototype of the Aviation Alleys remains the plane with the thinnest, literally skinniest wings because it's got no fuel in it. Take a look at this. So I thank you guys so much for watching this electrocuting video and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.